I'm not sure how much I have to pay for that introduction, but I'm guessing it's a few quid. Um, there's nothing like being bigged up before you need to come on and do something that absolutely strikes fear into you. And that's a bit weird. Um, uh, I could explain that, but I'm not going to. Oh, look, there's more. Um, so, uh, as Armin said, I'm Alan from Live Ideas. Um, we're a creative agency predominantly working uh, on internal comms campaigns, but not exclusively. Our sort of remit wanders and uh, goes into all, all sorts of things. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to have a quick chat with you, about 20 minutes or so, or if you're lucky, quicker, um, about sort of creating an identity around your ideas <laughs> initiative. Um, many organisations want ideas from anywhere and everywhere, from all across the four corners of their organisation, but we need to let employees know that their ideas are valued and wanted, and we need to do that from the very first communication that they see and receive. Um, and really, we need to do that in interesting and engaging ways, because, you know, it, it's a fun thing, right? We're talking about ideas, we're not talking about change, we're not talking about all of that you know, stodgy stuff that goes on with the organisation. We're talking about exciting, creative input. You're asking for feedback um, and involvement. But we do also need to manage expectations. I think we're just chatting in the break there about how ideas are going to be managed and how they're going to be processed and how they're going to be moved through the, the system, if you like. And that's important to, to consider within your uh, campaign and the comms that goes around your ideas initiative. In this brief presentation, I will just share a few thoughts and tips um, on campaigns generally. I don't know how, how many of you are in comms as opposed to other, you're in comms, comms, comms tower? Okay, yeah, fair, fair few. What, the uh, rest of you sort of innovation sort of teams, I guess? No? Tech? IT? Yeah? Okay. Um, it's really simple. We're just going to do stuff that's going to be massively successful, whether that's the ideas that you're getting in or it's part of your campaign. Now, the campaign that wraps around your ideas initiative needs to engage and hopefully inspire people to get involved because without their ideas, the initiative is nothing. That's the whole point of it, right? Um, but we need to give them confidence as well and reassurance that their ideas are going to be valued and, and appreciated. Um, in comparison to other communications, kind of as I just touched on, there's an opportunity to be a little bit fun and perhaps a bit different. The bulbs idea, lighting up, that's, that's amazing. I love that. You should be here, not me. Um, you should have, uh, share, share a little bit more about that. And I think just I use the word fun with a little bit of caution because I know that some organisations might run away from that sort of side of things. But actually... It's about defining what is different within your organisation and trying just to cut through a little bit of the noise. And I think, you know, the bulbs and is, is one approach, but also the look and feel potentially, the tone of voice. Um, certainly the tone of voice. I think language is more conversational and playful that wraps around this campaign to make feel, people feel more comfortable about what it is that you're asking from them. Uh, the look and feel perhaps something a little bit unexpected, something that maybe steps away from brand. I'll, I'll come on to that in a moment. Um, the mix of channels as well. Use everything that's at your disposal to reach your, your, um, your employees, but perhaps alongside the normal channels, consider something ambient or guerrilla, something a little bit, you know, a bit, bit more edgy. Um, that down at the bottom, which you might not be able to see, it says the Idea Development Centre. Um, so I think what's, what's important with anything to do with ideas is that we think and act differently. We're all different. We all need time and space. And where we get our best ideas could be here or it could be somewhere else. And, you know, often for me, it's when I'm driving or I've got time away from work. And it's interesting that actually all we're talking about is the workplace but that's not always where you do your best thinking. So through social and collaborative tools, you can generate those ideas when people are anywhere. So one of the things that sort of struck me is that using unusual moments and spaces to promote the campaign or initiative is worth considering. Now, we do need to be a little bit careful. I think 
particularly in travel and transport and, and other industries where they have people on site where they effectively have a third space that isn't work, it's not home, but it's where they go to relax, perhaps. We need to be careful how we use those spaces because um, people get a bit militant when you invade their, their spaces. There's some research going on at the moment about remote workers. Um, and it was, um, I think it was the, uh, someone from a train company had cut the wires to a um, plasma screen that was in their restrooms because they just didn't want those messages being pumped out. That's quite severe, I think. Um, I've got a short video to show you. Hopefully it will provide a little bit of inspiration for, uh, for perhaps your, your campaign. Ideas are scary. They come into this world ugly and messy. Ideas are frightening because they threaten what is known. They are the natural born enemy of the way things are. Yes, ideas are scary and messy and fragile. But under the proper care, they become something beautiful. Makes you really want to care for it, doesn't it? That, that <laughs> ugly little idea, that scary little idea, makes you want to give it somewhere warm and safe to live. It makes me think of what the last speaker was talking about, about psychological safety. There's a lot of that that comes through in, in, in what's there. Just the, that sense that you're going to put something out there, it's going to be a bit ugly, a bit scary, not quite right. People might not like it, they might reject it. But in the right circumstances, someone's going to give it a home and make it, make it welcome. Um, so, sorry, I, beyond the bulb, I feel a little bit like I'm going against what I've just said about your lovely campaign. But, <laughs> but um, it was... Um, I love it, honestly. Um, but, but the way in which we represent ideas, now there's iconography that we use um, that would naturally form part. As soon as you were going to do an identity for your campaign, you would go to a light bulb because it's something that immediately represents an idea. And that's brilliant because we all understand it. It's almost the universal language that we can use. But I think what I took from the GE campaign, I should say that that's nothing to do with us, we didn't work on it, it's just something that I think is lovely, um, is that actually when you've got a strong story and a strong concept, you can give uh, an emotional attachment to something that is just, well, it's, it's nothing, is it? An idea, you can't see it, you can't feel it, but somehow you're drawn to looking after that thing. There was a... Um, campaign recently by the pensions department and I think it was to do with work in pensions and that was like a big fluffy monster as well. It's funny how they both sort of used a similar sort of approach to bring something to life that hasn't got a visual pre presence. Um, I, I wrote notes and I've just kind of con completely gone off it but um, the, the, that, that story from GE is essentially... Um, an ugly duckling story, isn't it? It's, it's very much that where actually we're going to take something on a journey and together we're going to make it work and it's going to be beautiful. Um, yeah, and our ideas aren't typically swans from birth, so we, um, we need to give them the right environment to grow, grow into. So... <laughs> <laughs> So we're at the start line. We know we want to do an ideas campaign. So you're at the start line. The irony is that uh, you need ideas for your ideas campaign to generate ideas from around the business. And you're there. Before you can go off and get those ideas, you need to come up with your own ideas. What do we all want? Ideas, I think, is what we need. So what's, what's tricky is that actually you're going to go and do exactly the opposite to what you're going to ask people to do. You're going to go away and come up with a load of ideas by yourself and put those together, whereas you're going to go out and do a campaign that's asking for everyone to come together and share their ideas. 
So it could be a thought there that you go out and ask people about what it is they would love to see, possibly. Um, but I think what um, I often do in an approach to sort of generating ideas for comms campaigns would absolutely to be looking at different industries and sectors that are talking about creativity, ideas and innovation and seeing what they're doing, how are they representing all of that stuff to external audiences, internal audiences, like the GE stuff there, and thinking, well, what can I borrow from that? What can I take? How can I evolve what they've done into something that's going to work for us? Now, that's not stealing an idea. That's building on someone's thought process and moving it on to the next stage. Um, it doesn't matter where that's from. So I think if you, if you look at some of the other innovative companies that you can think of, I'm sure you'll find other examples which you could spark interest. And for me, I'm always squirreling thoughts and ideas away and coming back to those. That GE thing's been knocking around for years and just been there for my enjoyment, and now I get to share it with you all. So it's finally had a use. Um, I think one of the things that we... Sorry, it's a bit, a bit lively, isn't it? The yellow there. <laughs> um, one of the things that we often hear when we're going in and talking to people and putting campaign, campaigns together is the challenge of dealing with brand. Um, there tends to be a corporate brand in place. No one wants to use that. They all want to do something different, but then we need to find some balance because it's going to go in front of some important people who are going to have an opinion and say, well, why doesn't this look like our corporate brand? So it's all about trying to unlock the opportunities within those brands to try and do something different and innovative within it um, that pushes the boundaries but still keeps people in a relatively com comfy place. What is it about that that they can feel comfortable about? Often it's imagery and illustration that you can use to sort of break that. I think with something like this, I know typically with, um, with brand guidelines and bits and pieces, there's going to be a tone of voice sort of part to that. How effectively is that employed throughout the organisation? I'm going to bet not very well. So there tends to be an opportunity to be a little bit more light-hearted. I talked about being conversational in the words that are used. Um, not necessarily breaking brand, but just giving it a little bit of a nudge and pushing it in the direction that you want to go in and trying to do something different. Really? Wow. I better hurry up. <laughs> Who knew? Um, right. Uh, yeah, make a plan. Make it good. And actually, just on, think about what your campaign is. So I know some of you will be doing ongoing ideas initiatives that are always on. That needs to be thought through, because if you overcommit to a creative concept and identity at the start, that's going to be difficult to keep running. So it needs to be workable. Um, if you're doing more time-framed sort of initiatives, then that's great, because you can go for it. You know what your, your, your plan is, your rollout, and how effective it's going to be um, within that time frame. <coughs> All right. The rule of three. Uh, three wishes, three little pigs, three bears. Uh, things come in threes, even bad luck, but we don't really want to focus on that. But um, campaigns often uh, attempt to convey a lot of information. Try and strip it back, condense things into three simple objectives, priorities, or actions. Meeting this week, I was told we've got three clear messages that we want to share with our employees. One, simplification. Two, confidentiality. Three, empowerment, innovation, and transformation. <laughs> I, you know, I'm, I'm not a mathematician, but I'm pretty sure that's more than three. So just try and keep it simple, I guess, is my, my, my tip there. Uh, watch your language. I've touched on that a few times. Focus on using positive, motivating language with an active voice, trying to bring, bring people involved, particularly if there's a time frame involved. You've got a real opportunity there to drive some interaction. Uh, conversational, human, reassuring are all like good, good aspects to think about. Um, make it visual. Um, most of our brain is dedicated to visual stuff and interpreting it. So be as visual as you can with what you, what you, what you can uh, put out there from a comms perspective. Uh, I think 50% of our brain is involved with visual processing and we process images far quicker than other forms of uh, communication. Final thought. 
and I think I will then end on time. Um, what does it take to come up with a great idea? And what I'm thinking about here is, uh, yeah, so stay off the internet for a bit, that'll do it. Um, that'll just give you time back, wouldn't it? That would be the best thing about it. But a couple of tips that I would advise, if you're trying to come up with ideas for your ideas campaign to generate ideas from around the business, would be um, use some random stimulus. I think often, like this whole thinking of out of the box thing, people can't get out the box because they're too stuck in it. So do a thing from time to time. Edward de Bono was mentioned earlier. He does a, he's got a whole book, which is about random stimulus. And basically, you pick a couple of random words, try and make connections back to your campaign and what you're trying to achieve. It could be any words. And you end up in a completely different place to what you would have done if you started from within the box and worked out. Um, never stop looking. So my comment about the GE campaign, creativity isn't a moment, it's an ongoing process and we all need to keep working at it. So the more we absorb, the more we look, the more we can put back into our work. Uh, if we need incredible ideas, then we just need to look for them because they're out there. Thanks. <laughs>